Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking. As always, please subscribe to the channel. You can find me at TikToking.com also or at Steve Halleck on Instagram. And pretty new, I've got a podcast available on iTunes or Stitcher or any of your podcast apps. It is the TikToking podcast. But let's not waste too much time with that stuff because you can see I've got a pretty special piece right here. This is the Grubel Forcey GMT. Any of you who follow me on social media or whatever have seen this watch and I've gotten tons and tons of requests to do a video, so here it is. So I think what I'm gonna do is go through the functions first and then we can kind of talk about the high level stuff and as I do that, obviously you'll get a look but pay attention, you know, as I'm going through to all the different angles and the insane finishing uh, and stuff like that. But let's go over what this thing does. Time here, hours, minutes, obviously. Here you've got your seconds. This is a power reserve. It's a manual wind watch. You've got 72 hours of power reserve. Over here you've got a GMT second time zone set here. So each push is an hour and you can just set that to whatever second time zone you want it to display. Now here is basically a world timer. The globe spins once every 24 hours and around the edges you've got those 24 hours marked out. So there in red you've got midnight and in yellow down here you've got noon. And basically this functions as a world timer at a glance. So right now I'm in Los Angeles, uh, it's 12, 20, and you can see that if you looked here at the 12 and you take it up, you are in Los Angeles, right? So if you wanted to just know really quickly um, the time in, uh, let's say, New York, you can look and find New York and come down and you are at 15. Or let's say you wanted to just quickly know like I don't know exactly what time it is everywhere in Europe. Like you wouldn't be able to figure it out super exactly from here, but you can basically look and you're like, oh, Central Europe, we're right around 21 or something like that, right? So it's pretty practical because usually I don't really care what it is to the hour somewhere, but a lot of times like in my line of work, I want to know uh, kind of like what basic time is it in Hong Kong? Like, is it the middle of the night? Is it the middle of the morning? Is somebody gonna respond to me if I write to them or something like that? And I can look over here and we can figure out that like, okay, it's actually like a fairly um, reasonable sort of early time in the morning and it's gonna be a few hours till everybody wakes up. But you know, whether it's uh, six, five, four, you know, wherever you are in Asia, we're somewhere in that region, right? So I can expect all the emails to start coming in from there in a couple hours. Um, so that's, that's how you use that. And the dome itself is titanium. It is spectacular in person uh, and really, of course, makes the watch. Uh, on the back, you have a real world timer. Um, here you have each time zone. And the way you use this is the Cities in white observe summertime and the cities in black do not. So if it is during the summer and you're looking for a city in white, you read its time off this central disk. If it is winter and or you're looking at a city in black, you read the time off the outer disk. So here's where you can find exactly what time it is. So now if I want to know, okay, what time is it in Hong Kong? I know it's right around 3.30, right? Um, now, if they were a summertime country, I would read in here and it would be 4.30. But I know they're not because it's black. So how to set the watch. Now this is a really cool function of this watch. Um, you can basically choose what you want local time and what you want your second time to be. I personally prefer to keep the main dial as my local time wherever I am. And the way you do that is pretty simple. 
Uh, if you're going to change the time zone, so let's say this is set up for me right now. Uh, it's, you know, the Los Angeles is set on the globe. The globe is set for where I am and where the globe is, right? So if it's all right, then no matter where you travel, it doesn't change where the globe is. And they've done a really cool thing to make it so that you can hold that. So basically, as you're setting the time, if you set it like this, then you can see the globe moves as you set it, right? However, if you hold the GMT button while you set it, then you can set the time without the globe moving. So, let's say I've just traveled now nine hours ahead. Boom. The globe is still exactly right. And I can see exactly, you know, the time in Los Angeles is still the time in Los Angeles. It has nothing to do with the fact that I've moved. But now my main time is wherever else I am in the world. And then if I wanted, I could go back to this GMT hand and, you know, set that for whatever hour I want it to be at, right? So that's a pretty cool function and I think uh, very practical. Uh, makes it a really great travel watch. The only thing, of course, uh, with traveling is it's a really expensive watch. I don't tend to travel with uh, the big, big stuff, but, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks, I suppose. Okay, now let's go through the groobly groobleness of this thing, and that is just the outstanding, ridiculous finish, okay? I hope that this can come across, and I'm just going to try to get the different pieces to catch the light, but... It really is how I mentioned in, I think I mentioned it in the technique video that I made. Looking at a Grubel 4C is like looking at a high definition television when you're used to standard definition. The finish on every little piece is so perfect and so precise that just the, the lines between everything are so sharp and it, it really looks like it came from a different world or something. It is, it is just perfect. And here you have this incredible mix of surfaces. So you've got like, uh, you notice immediately the black polish on these bridges uh, versus the anthracite grained finish of the movement plate. You've got here a black polished hand, but it comes on to this sort of long stripe polished track and then this matte hour track or whatever you want to call that. You have these painted squares and hands uh, that are just absolutely perfectly painted. I mean like the 12 in there, this square here, this red GMT hand, I assume is like anodized or something. It's got that look, but again, it's just perfect straight through and the blued hand for the second. Like, this is the type of thing that I really can't show properly on a video, and I'm just sort of doing my best. But it, the second you see it in person, it's like a totally different animal than anything else you'll ever see. Uh, you do not have to be a watch expert to look at this and be like, wow, that is something incredibly special. I also think in this particular piece, it's kind of one of the most poetic grubles, and I think... Um, like works as a coherent piece of mechanical art uh, more than almost any other watch in the industry. I love, first of all, the case with these bubbles. You have a concrete representation of this idea of a classic watch that's kind of busting out and becoming this contemporary time machine. Um, but then you've got the contrast of this very high rate. So this is a 24 second rotating, 25 second inclined tourbillon, which was their third invention. And they do all these, uh, you know, experiments to find out how to get the best chronometry. And so this was the third invention of how, you know, to coax out the best chronometry out of a tourbillon. But so this moves very fast, 24 seconds for a rotation, but here you have 24 hours for a full rotation. 
so to me, the, the kind of uh, contrast of the high frequency, like craziness of everyday life contrasted with the precise, slow, 24-hour rotation of the globe. You know, we're all citizens of the world here. Um, I think it makes it a very um, effective piece of art. I want you to see now the depth. You have a ton of depth and three-dimensionality in this with different steps and different heights, and then, of course, all highlighted by this globe which you can see also through the window. This is the equator, and you have the southern hemisphere, which comes through there. So let me show it to you on the wrist. The watch actually wears amazingly well. It's 43 and a half millimeters, so it's a, it's a pretty reasonable size, but also you can see these lugs are very short and kind of come straight down. And I've been wearing this as a daily wearer, basically. Uh, and I find it to be incredibly comfortable. It's got this deployment buckle, nothing terribly special, but it's nicely done. Let's click it in, and so you can see it fits pretty perfectly on my wrist. It's tall, but not too tall, um, but very interesting at every angle, and you can see how it just, man, that is one beautiful, beautiful watch. So I know that I will never do justice to this watch on a video, but I hope at least it gives you guys some idea of just how stunningly, stunningly gorgeous and well executed this piece is. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to bringing you more of this caliber. This is the stuff that really gets my heart racing, and I hope it does for you too. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.